I'm thrilled to introduce success coach Kate McKay. Kate is an international best selling author, transformational speaker, athlete, podcaster, and multi million dollar business owner whose passion is to spread her message of living a life of confidence, courage, and clarity of purpose. Please welcome Kate McKay. Hello, I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> We are so thrilled to have you here, Kate. And what I would really love to ask you is how did you build this mindset for success? Isn't the mindset such a buzzword, right? Well, first of all, what is mindset? What is mindset? Well, for me, mindset is being aware of your conscious thoughts and then bringing forth unconscious beliefs and merging them together in order to create a magnificent future. Now, that sounds kind of simple, but it's really, really messy. <laughs> I'm just going to be dead on honest. Being aware, being conscious, building resiliency, grit, a sense of fulfillment and happiness is a messy process. And I think in our cultures, we're so geared towards making things by all appearances neat and tidy. And we as humans, our, our emotions, our experiences, our past are messy. And I think we need to learn to embrace our mess. Wow, embrace our mess. So I guess the big question is, how did, how did you do that? Like, and, and I'd love to know, like, was there a time when your mindset wasn't strong and what did you do to build that muscle? Absolutely. Well, I'm all about, uh, obviously, I'm physically um, centered, and that is from the fact of my sheer dysfunction. I have acute ADHD. I'm from a family of 11. I'm one of nine children. And I always, when I was growing up, used to announce myself that, hey, I'm one of nine children, because for some reason, I thought that said a lot. And I really do think it does. I think that when you're from a really big family, you learn resiliency, you learn how to share or not share. You learn how to fight and speak your voice. You know what it's like to be humbled. You know what it's like to not get what you want. There are so many lessons in the microcosm of the macrocosm of a big family and dynamic that I think was completely invaluable to my growth. However, I had one coach when I was um, developing, I developed a gold business um, in 2008 to 2011. I bought and sold precious metals. Now I had no business experience and yet I grew this business as a stay-at-home mom into a $17 million company. And what I say, Catherine, is I was flipping grilled cheese with one hand, you know, taking care of my three kids and buying and selling gold on the open market on the other. And I had this coach say to me, she goes, Katie, you're learning how to develop leadership. And I was like, oh, my parents taught us, you know, leadership, you know, Martin Luther King and all this, you know, all this civil rights things that my parents were so passionate about. And, and my coach said, no, Katie, they taught you advocacy. That's a very different thing. And I was like, wow. And I think the mindset of a leader or the mindset of a coach or the mindset of someone who's successful so much centers on how we flourish as an individual. And what's required is that we do the internal work. And that's why I say the process of getting a clear mindset is in the mess, is in the uncovering of who you are and what your core beliefs are and who you want to be. So you're a mom with three children and you start to flip gold. That's a pretty big story. What made you go go gold and what... What led you to that? There must have been something going on. Well, I had was owned a gym. And so my marriage was very chaotic. My former husband had a very difficult time keeping a job. And I realized I owned this gym and I was burnt out or so I thought. I said, I got to sell the gym. I got to see if I can make a go of it and just being more the supportive wife at home. And that wasn't going to happen. And I knew my prince wasn't coming, Catherine. And I once I sold the gym and the economic shift happened, with the subprime mortgage industry and the economy really going into the tank, an opportunity presented to me um, in a buying opportunity where I was able to partner with hundreds and hundreds of women to buy their scrap gold and then sell it on the open market. And Catherine, what I learned in that job is that people trusted me. They listened to me. They respected my opinion. 
opinion. And I felt deeply honored to be in that position. Now, the diversity of people that we were dealing with, being from a big family served me. I was going into the projects and I was going into fancy houses with, you know, cloth doilies, like all divergent, different kinds of people. And I was always the same. And I remember one time I was being filmed and uh, for a show and the producer pulled me aside and he's like, can I tell you something? And I was like, "Uh oh, what I do? Because <laughs> I'm assuming I got in trouble for something. And he said, you're always the same. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, no, you're always the same when the camera's not on, when the camera's on, when you're talking to the Jane, like you're always the same. And he goes, that's a good thing. And I said, oh, okay, well, who else would I be? And knowing this and realizing this really is a significant aspect of mindset and of success is you, who you are on the inside is represented and live in, in the outside and your external. And this is the reason why people trust me and why people tell me very sacred things. Because sometimes people tell me things so randomly, I'm like, wow, I can't believe they're telling me that. I don't know if I trust <laughs> me with that. It's just kind of a funny experience, but I do believe the foundation of leadership and um, is really having the ability to be a, a good listener and be present. And I think a funny story, Catherine, I got shipped off to private high school when I was a junior in high school and um, I was a performing arts and I thought I was all that in a bag of chips. And the first paper I got, I got a D minus in composition. And now I'm a best-selling writer. So anyone out there who wants to be a writer and someone told you couldn't, they're a liar. You can. Um, and I remember I found theater and I was always like B minus student. Couldn't, you know, I love to learn, but it just studying or really giving the test back as they what they wanted wasn't my thing. But what I learned in theater was I could get an A. And all I had to do was listen and respond authentically. And I was like, wow, I kind of good at that. So I think ultimately that has been the key to my success. Everything that you're telling me is quite mind blowing. And like my husband came from a family of seven. And so it still depends though, I believe on the behavior style that you're born with, because some of them, would fight for what they wanted, whereas others would always have something taken off them. And 100%. So, yeah, so there right. is the cup half full or the cup half empty, and you can have the exact same parents, but I believe that every child has a different experience with those parents and with that dynamic. And you know how someone will say, oh, that's the favourite, and they'll say, no, you're the favourite and all the rest of it because of this mindset and and, and our natural raw behaviors. So who were you in the family? It's a great question. I didn't fit in. And I think any of the viewers or listeners out there who don't fit, fit in, who never fit in, who no matter where you were, you kind of felt like, wow, I'm not like everybody here. That's been my entire life. And in a younger years, it wasn't a pleasant experience. Like I literally didn't feel like I fit in with my family. They were all deadheads. Like the Grateful Dead was always playing in my house. And I'm like, this is depressing. <laughs> like the Grateful Dead. So it was just this thing. I was, I would say that I was my mom's favorite because my mom was overwhelmed with all those children. She was depressed. So there was a role, you know, we come in with soul agreements and mine with my mom was I'm here to make her happy and make her laugh, you know? And so that was my role. I was to be the light for my mom. And, uh, and then really uh, the reason why I don't tell people now that I'm from a big family is because I think it defined me in a negative way. You see, because what happened, Catherine was in 2017, yeah, my life blew apart. My oldest son, William committed suicide and me being my mom's favorite, she couldn't deal with me because she never dealt with the, the grief of her loss of her own son. My brother was murdered at the same age that my son committed suicide. My mom was 54, my brother Matthew was killed, and I was 54 when Will died. So there was so much trauma that my mother couldn't love me. So it blew up the agreement, you see? And so those roles, this is why I say the growth is in the mess because I know mess. 
And yet, as Les Brown so aptly states, right? When life knocks you down, <laughs> make sure you fall on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. And I remember the day is crystal clear when right after Will died and I was a mess on my knees, like it was bad, but my whole family around me fell apart. My other two kids were a mess. My former husband had a bipolar break. It was up to me to keep things together. And I remember laying there in bed and tears were streaming down my face. And I was like, he's gone. He's not coming back. The spiritual center of my family is not coming back. Well, two feet on the floor, Katie, because you're going to have to honor him and live a life of integrity and to be the light for him and you. And so honestly, every single day, that's why I'm two feet on the floor to be the light because there is so much darkness. Yes, you need to be the light. And that's what I lean into every day. Oh my gosh, I can barely talk. Sorry. Wow, what a what a um what a time to go through. And at this time you had the gym, were you still flipping the gold as well? When Will passed, no. No, it was um just yeah, I was just doing my life. I would became a high performance coach after that, still work a little bit in the gym, but I really used one of the things that's helped me with mindset is that since I was 21, I lifted weights because it was the only thing that calmed me down. It was my drug of choice. You see, because it, you know, at when my brother, when I found out my brother was, was gone and I went to the gym, right? Because the weights, the pushing against me of the weight calmed my soul. And so for 40 years, if people are like, Oh, you're so fit. You're so in shape. And I'm all just looking around left to right. I guess I am fit, but really it's the psychology of what happens to me when I'm pushed to the edge of my body. And now I dance. I've transferred out of the, the bodybuilding. I competed in bikini from age 43 until 60. I just turned 60 last year. So um, I hung up my stripper heels for uh, pole dancing heels, just a little higher, the pole dancing heels. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, congratulations on that turning 60 and you look like 40. So maybe I should get out there and start lifting some weights too. And funny you should say that because at the age of 16, I remember, um, you know, when we'd get together on weekends, you know, the big group of us and some of the guys are lifting weights and I'm thinking, well, well why can't we? And now I started to bench press. And I was bench pressing 40, 50, 60, like some of the guys. And, you know, I I really loved it because it was quite empowering to feel so strong. My body then kind of, my shoulders then <laughs> went like that. And I've always had these, these broad shoulders now. And I built them. Gorgeous. Um, but the, my body kind of changed as well. You know, they used to call me Coca-Cola. You know, I think I'm look more like Bintang now, but whatever. Um, <laughs> working on it, of course. And, and of that, it is, it is a real mindset. It is a real mindset because I haven't done any dieting sort in my life. I just always ate well, and then I I had um glandular fever. I had six autoimmune diseases, um Hashimoto's, you know, gluten intolerance, blah 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 all those things that you love to collect until I said to the universe, I've just had enough. This, this will do me now. I've, I've got enough things to deal with. And, you know, it was through a time when I lost, um, I'd lost my mum when I was 16. She died suddenly. And then my, and then my dad. So things happen to us in life and then it can change our body and mm -hmm. it can then affect the mind. And then the mind can become strong again when you just say, right, enough's enough. This is, this is where I'm going now. This is what I'm doing. I don't know if that happens to you, Kate, but I do talk to myself. Well, it's like the, for me, it's like being in my body is my sanity. And I truly do believe that the path to greatness and path to fulfillment is similar. Athletic mindset and success mindset are so similar. Like we have to live a life of integrity. We have to push through our edges. We, we must develop grit. We must develop, develop resiliency. We must fall in love with the boring process of learning something. It's boring. It is tedious. 
It is something you must fall in love with. And we're in a culture right now in the, the pursuit of happiness through pleasure and pleasure alone, right? Our whole marketing structure is geared towards the pleasure dopamine hit, right? But what does it mean then if we're pursuing excellence? It's a different path. It's an internal path. This is what we talk about when we talk about mindset. Yes, that in order for me to pursue excellence, despite my the challenges, despite my ADHD, we've all had challenges, certainly, is understanding that the path of excellence, the pursuit, we need to fall in love with that. And there's happiness along the way. Fulfillment, ultimately, is the greatest pleasure to flourish. Flourish is just a flower. So what are the ways yeah. in your life that you're thriving and growing, right? Yeah. And when you're saying that, just before you got to the flower, I'm thinking, because in my head, I always say there's a season for everything. Sometimes in this season, we want what's happening in the next season. But if we bring it into this season, it does, it kind of blows up a little bit. And I personally, as a human being, I have not been great to be able to uh, exercise, run an amazing business, look after the family and do everything well all at the same time. And so now as I'm getting moving on to the 60s, I said to my husband, I can't keep going if this weight doesn't stop. Sometimes in our life we have to stop and really address something, don't we? And we've really got to throw ourselves into it. And, and what we focus on grows. That's something that I know. So if I'm focusing on my work, it grows. If I'm focusing on the family, there's a lot more contentment if I'm focusing and, you know, people go, it's finding a balance, but sometimes that balance can kill you as well. It's, it's, yeah. Balance is an illusion. It's called <laughs> radical prioritization. It's radical prioritization. Your body is your holy vessel to which everything births from, yeah. including our babies. Yes. So it's, this is the holy vessel. This is our connection, our vertical connection to the universe. This is the divine. This and so a lot of times, is this is everything it. comes from there. Hi, I'm Kath Malloy. I'm an author, speaker, and trainer. And I'm here today just to let you know about The Million Dollar Handshake. So this book came out by Hachette in 2018. And very quickly, it made it to the Business Book of the Year in UK for Seven Dials and Orion Books. Actually, um, they, they published Harry Potter. They picked it up and they bought the international rights. And since then, it's been released in uh, different languages. So this is for Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau. Uh, this is in Vietnam. A girlfriend walked past the bookshop and she said, Kath, your book's it. So they bought the international rights as well. And we're so excited because we're going over to work there in 2024 in Vietnam. And of course, we've got the wonderful Australian version that was put out by Hachette Australia and New Zealand. So we react before we speak, and this is one of the biggest problems that we have in business and in life today. And so this book is helping actually work out how we can stop that miscommunication, how we can be more present in the situations and how we can create more win-wins in our life. We've even got this little tiny uh, Indian version because it's nice and light for the back books, for the um, backpacks. So. If you would like to create more win-wins in your life, then we would love you to pick up a copy of The Million Dollar Handshake too. Speak soon. And so I think people do things for two reasons. One is through inspiration. We get inspired. We hear someone talking, go, wow, Kate's story, that's incredible. You know, what could I do? And the, the, the other thing is through desperation. And what mm -hmm. I know is that most people like inspiration, you know, in spirit, their spirit feels happy when they hear this, but it doesn't always lead to action. However, Never rarely does. <laughs> inspiration does. Yeah. Like even right. my jacket's too big for me right now. Right. So, well, for the first time I focused on this, I focused on food and I always thought if I focus on food, it, it's going to be meaning that I'm going to eat more, but in actual fact, I learned just to have hundred grams of protein with what I'm eating. And Excellent. I've really started to learn about food. After all these years, I thought I knew so much about healthy food, but the combination. So if you are listening and you're thinking, I'm really not enjoying these 
kilos coming on. There are things that you can do. But what did you say before? You got to love what you hate. Right. Well, this, I, this is my newest book, Claim Your Inner Hottie, which the subtitle is A Guide to Living with Confidence, Vibrance, and Sex Appeal. What is waiting to be released with the weight is your inner hottie babes and, bo- and badasses. Inside you is an inner hottie. We all have it. And the weight and the self-sabotage and the low self-esteem is all masking this beautiful light that is within you, right? And so we, we, can, we can say that it's, oh, I don't have time, right? But if we don't radically prioritize the, the divine, the holy vessel to which we were given, we're never going to be at the level to which we, this is the, this is the drive. This skin suits it. Love yep. its imperfections, yep. right? Love its imperfections. If we don't look after it, we can't keep going. We love our business and we throw everything into it. And we don't take that time to look after ourselves. Like for me, you know, our body, our mindset, what we're putting in here, what we're putting in here, you know, we are connected. And so I actually, for the first time in years, took a month off. I I blocked out the whole of April and April was for me focusing on what do I, what does my body need? How is it going to work with all these autoimmune diseases? Since 35, I finally I've said, right, what do I need to do for my body? Wow. And yeah. And it Congratulations. Truly is- Role modeling, role modeling right there. That's huge. And I hope you're speaking of it. And I'm so curious about how this process has been for you. How has well, it the been? First what time, the did? first time I've even, even mentioned it. And of course, it's only May now, so I'm coming through it and I realize that I need longer. So I'm now, you know, having to fit my work commitments in around this. But because I spent over 21 days immersed in this, it's now easy. Wow. That's huge. I hated it. And so if anyone's out there that loves the work, loves their family, loves everything they're doing, but they're not really looking after their body. You know, we've got to start. And so now my exercise is coming back in. And as a young person, I just loved exercise. But this podcast isn't about me, sorry. <laughs> no, it's per- no, because this is so important that people hear this. This is so, 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 so very important because, you know, as a coach, if I can get into a conversation like this and then we, and we can say, well, what happened? What was different? It's delicious. And because people love you, right? And they know about me or they whatever, but this is such a wonderful interaction. I'm so grateful that you shared it. And the funny thing is my dad with the nine kids, he was a Y member for 63 years, right? So he even knew radical prioritization as busy as he was that he knew he needed to do it to right up here. And I want... All the science is showing that the more muscle mass we have, the more mitochondria, I write that word down, right? Those are our little power packs in our muscle that fuel what? Our brains. Mm. So we need the muscle mass. It protects us from injury. It gives us curves. It makes us feel strong and supple, right? We want at the same time, strong and supple businesses. We want strong and supple relationships, but this must come from internal. It's the intrapersonal relationship. Who are you? And what part of you doesn't feel as though you deserve or don't deserve that level of self-care? Self-respect begins right here at the lips. And I do think that that's absolutely right, right here on our lips. And because of all my you know, autoimmunes, I was eating pretty natural anyway, but I've learned now to make um, bread that's carbohydrate-free and <laughs> sugar-free, and I'm enjoying it. Um, Good. <laughs> that's awesome. Good for you. It takes 10 minutes to whip it up, 30 minutes in the oven, and you've got a hot loaf coming out. So Delicious. It's, And I understand because we are busy, and when we, we love our life and we love our business, something always gets let go Mm -hmm. and through desperation because I'm like I don't want to walk on the stage with tight pants and people don't notice so much when I do lose because of my you know big cheeky face I was you know 51 when I met um John 51 kilos and so I've always um you know I was always small I never needed to worry but then once these autoimmune started to kick in the weight can come on and I've just been traveling I just spoke in Antarctica I came back, I climbed Machu Picchu three times, you know, I exercised the whole time and yet I was still putting 
on weight. So um, sometimes you do need to block yourself out for that month. Sometimes you have to start again and go, what is happening? What does my body need right now? Because I'm always feeding my mind and I love my business. I love my clients like you do. But something wasn't right and it was desperation because I thought, what if I put on any more weight? What's going to happen to me? I'm going to blow up and explode. Like a tick. <laughs> well, we have to get disturbed enough, right? And 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 sometimes that requires external shifts and changes and sometimes it needs, it's internal, right? The, the changes are far more likely, 80% more likely to stick if they come from an internal source. Like, you know what? I deserve more, right? And, and I think yeah. that the big... Yes. Right. And the big shift happens. And I'm going to bring this up because this is a big challenge. This is where we have mess is that when we decide we're going to transform, we think everyone's going to take out their pom poms and cheer us on. It doesn't matter if we're talking about growing a business, <laughs> losing weight, um, you know, getting divorced, anything. We think everyone's going to go. Yeah. People don't want you to change. They want you to say exactly the same. I hate to tell you. Because if you change, that means they got to change. So understand this to be true. And just as a little side note, a really great tip is if someone says, oh, who do you think you are, right? You, people start thinking you, you're you all that, right? And say, I was put here for a reason to live in everything that I was given as gifts. It's okay if you don't accept it, but I'm living into those gifts. I'm going to live into yeah. them. Yeah. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe you've got to disrupt yourself before you get disrupted. I don't want to end up in a hospital bed. I don't want to have diabetes. I don't want to have anything else that goes along with carrying around extra weight. Why on earth do any of us on this planet want to carry extra weight? We don't need extra weight in our business. We don't need extra weight in our life or on our body. So, you know, we need to shed these things that aren't exactly right for us. And like you said before, that you are the same on and off stage. And, um, you know, some people call this authenticity and it kind of really annoys me because I believe that everyone is really being them at the time. Like I don't think people know how to be something else, but sometimes people are absolutely going through things and they are shedding maybe the old them. Mm -hmm. And I've been a little bit lucky like you, Kate, where I've been able to be me my whole life too and I'm sure everyone else is being them as well but we do learn things and we do we do change the way we think thank god um as we learn more and as we have our experiences and you know people say I'm the same on and off too but I have seen people get off stage and then not want to talk to anyone but up there they want to talk to the crowd so but that's probably them because they're a little bit more introverted true, so true. Think I about believe it, like Go ahead. Yeah. You believe yeah, what? I, I believe that everyone is really, is really being them. And some people are finding, who am I? What, what can I do in this world? And they're asking themselves, and I don't know about you, but I still ask myself, right, what can I do better? What, you know? <laughs> Always. It's part of striving, right? And I think you understand this at a heart centered level, the, the whole idea behind the pursuit of excellence as a happiness path, right? Because we will never, thriving is in never settling. And it doesn't mean that we're not appreciating. Another path to happiness is the pursuit of awe. I've taken these, these three paths, pleasure, awe, and excellence from this phenomenal book called Resilience by Eric Greetens. And I'm actually writing my a new book on it called Pursuit. And so when we're approaching that path to mastery, what does it mean? There are feelings that are going to be uncomfortable, that we are going to have to grow and change, that we're going to be unusual, that people are going to think we're weird, all of these things. And when I say to you then that when I never fit in, that I was so used to not fitting in that for me, not speaking my truth would be weird. You know, it would be like, wait a minute, like I have to be somebody else. Well, I never fit in anyway, so I'm going to offend somebody. The hardest challenge, I believe, for men and for women is that when we make a commitment to change, we make a commitment to speak our truth, very difficult, takes great courage, by the way, great, great courage. 
is that we have to understand that maybe people aren't going to like us. And so much of our willingness to succumb to our highest and best is based on the fact that we're going to lose love or be judged. So we put other people's judgment of us, other people loving us over our own love and respect and honor. And uh, to me, it's time to turn that around. Yes. And it's interesting too. And for any of the women out there that are listening, you know, we've all had children. So you do give up a lot um, of yourself for them. And, and so we should. You know, these are human beings on this planet and we're their, we're their role models, but that also means we are their role models. And right. so if along the way you've given up your exercise time to spend time with them, I believe in the word integration. Take them on the walk with you. When I started this month off for this food, if I didn't bring my husband on this journey with me, it would have been twice as hard. Horrible. to be able to stick to it and now he's losing weight and he's loving it as well because unfortunately he went through some cancer they gave him female hormones so he got to see what it was like putting on weight as well right and um so I do think that we need to take those close people on this journey with us because sometimes it's not easy going alone no. And understanding too, that's the people that are waiting for you on the other side of your transformation, the people that you're here to serve, you don't even know who they are, but you must picture this person. I have this story where people think I just compete in a bikini because I want to look a certain way and nothing to do with that. I choose a, bik a bikini show because I'm in the midst of a hot mess and I need to focus my energies for the next eight weeks to get a book done, to manage my clients, to deal with you know, a, a mental health issue in my family, whatever that is, I need to put bumpers or guideposts along the way to help me focus. And when I am on stage, I'm picturing one of my clients who was, she was tied in her garage, chained to her garage, in her garage by her father and sexually assaulted, she and her sister, okay? I picture that person and people like them that never had the power to choose to have what that loss of freedom for her life, right? Because you really don't get over those types of abuse, really, really, because it affects your soul. And that is why I do what I do. That is why I still commit myself to helping people with mental health issues, because maybe if one person reached out to my son and said, hey, dude, I'm here for you, he'd still be walking along with us because he was one hell of a human. I'll never know the mind is a very very interesting thing mm -hmm. and how to build that mindset and for some people this planet today doesn't feel like it's for them <clears throat> exactly so being able to push through when we lose a loved one is extremely difficult now i'd love you to let us know something as we get to close off today around that and around the mess that our mind gets in and and what you do specifically to make that difference. Then we're going to roll the dice and we're going to pull a question. Love it. Around mindset for success. And then we're going to leave with a positive quote for the day. So um, for all of you that have stayed with us and journeyed with us, there has been many ups and downs in this podcast today. And hopefully you found some strength with within it. So I'm going to hand over to you, Kate, to let us know anything else before I roll the dice. I love it. Well, thank you. I, I What I would say to you is that, yes, there is such a thing as post-traumatic stress. It is real. But there is something even more beautiful and more magnificent, which is the power of transformation. And as I'm speaking now, you've lost someone in your life someone that really was a beautiful human being to you. And you think of that, and it hurts your soul because you miss them and love them. So what are the qualities that that person had? Who were they as a person that you loved so very much? And what I would like to say to you is, guess what? You get to wear those qualities. You get to embody them. And every day I wear my son's kindness, his gentleness and his loving spirit like a shroud and I'm honored to walk in that light. So grief is transformational. Embrace the qualities of someone you love. Lucky you, they don't need those gifts any, anymore. So they're yours to own. Wow. Thank you so much. 
Um, the power of transformation. I'm going to be thinking about that and I hope everyone else thinks about it too because we can all transform from situations, from times in our life and to build that strong um, mindset. So we're going to put Kate's details in there for you at the end. Um, reach out, grab the book, coaching. What an amazing, amazing person. And there's a podcast um, that Kate has that we'd love you to listen to. And also perhaps maybe reach out. Maybe it's a podcast that you could go on as well. So Kate, just as we're starting to wrap up, what color dice would you like me to roll? It has to be blue. Oh, blue. You're our first blue. And why blue? Because blue is just love. It looks like the sky. It's freedom. Oh, you got my favorite Yay. number, number three. Okay, so here's the card. Let's pull number three. <clears throat> okay, this is good because I'd love to know. What daily habits cont contribute to your successful mindset? Oh, boy. Reading, always learning, always staying curious is a primary. Stay curious and exercise fresh air. And finally, reaching out and being in the love with other people, other souls, because sometimes, as I said earlier, one phone call could change someone's life. One phone call, one text. I believe this to be true. I love that. And if you are listening and you get someone's name in your head, just reach out, send them a text Please. or phone them. It's so amazing that you just, you think of someone and next minute you're, you're speaking with them and they go, oh, I really need to hear from you today. So. If you do ever get that name in your head or I should ring so-and-so, just do it. And even if you don't have time, send them the text because yes. they'll be wanting to hear from you. That I truly I truly believe that in my little believe box. Thank you for sharing that, Kate. So keep reading, keep learning. Make sure that, you know, even if it's just a 30 minutes in the grass, walk, whatever it is, just give yourself 30 minutes a day because you deserve it. Yes. Yes, your yes. body, your body needs it. Getting out in that. Yesterday, I put on a raincoat, and the other good thing that's happened with this um thirty day reset in April is it started me again. Thank God, enjoying exercise because sometimes mm. it feels like a drag. Um, but once you start to do it, you start to enjoy it again. So I'm going to rip open this little card, and I'm going to leave everyone with this. <laughs> Impossible. Is just an opinion. I love that. So impossible is just an opinion because I'm possible, you're possible. And thank you, Kate, for joining us here today. Everyone, please reach out to Kate. Um, keep smiling, stay positive. Until next time. Thank you.